Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's Fraser Nash FN50 mid-upper gun turret. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. The Fraser Nash Type FN50 is a hydraulic operated mid-upper gun turret and is mounted in the top of the Lancaster's fuselage rear centre portion between formers 24 and 26. The services to the turret all run from the starboard side of the fuselage, leaving the gangway clear on the port side. A tube fitted transversely across the fuselage at former 25 supports the hydraulic pipes and electrical wiring for the turret. A mounting step on a pivoted tubular frame and supported by a cable is also fitted on the starboard side between formers 24 and 25 and when not in use is turned up against the fuselage side and secured by a catch. A cupola consisting of a metal frame with transparent panels is fixed to the rotating ring completely covering the upper part of the turret and rotating with it, thereby protecting the air gunner from the airstream. The two Browning Point 303 inch guns are mounted on a cradle which pivots in bearings housed in gun brackets. The gun barrels projecting through slots in the cupola. The gun brackets are built up structures secured at the front and rear to the rotating ring and serve as caudal stiffeners for it. Two double acting gun elevation rams secured at their lower ends to the gun brackets and connected at their piston rod ends to the gun cradle. Elevate and depress the guns by rocking the cradle in its bearings in the gun brackets. The lower part of the turret is enclosed in a semicircular drum, the floor of which carries the rotating service joint through which the pressure oil supply and return pipes, the oxygen supply and the electrical services pass into the turret. Entrance to the turret is effected through the cutaway rear portion of the turret drum and the air gunner's seat, which is pivoted, is swung back to facilitate entry. An arch frame is mounted on the rotating ring and is braced to the gun brackets by two side brackets. A sight radius arm, which is pivoted in these side brackets, carries a free gun reflector sight at a suitable height for the air gunner and is coupled by levers and links to the gun cradle so that the sight is elevated or depressed in unison with the movement of the guns. A hydraulic motor for rotating the turret is mounted on the rotating ring in front of the air gunner and the motor spindle which extends through the rotating ring carries a pinion which engages with the circular gear rack secured to the fixing ring. Hydraulic power for operating the hydraulic motor and the gun elevation rams is obtained direct from a pump driven by the starboard outer Merlin engine. The oil is supplied under pressure through the rotating service joint to a valve box within the turret, which controls the direction of flow to these components. The recuperator is fitted in the hydraulic system between the relief valve and the rotating service joint. It incorporates a low pressure release valve which bypasses the pressure oil supply to the return pipe when the pressure exceeds 285 pounds per square inch. The recuperator serves the following purposes. The recuperator acts as a chamber of variable volume to compensate for the difference in oil volume due to temperature changes and alterations in the capacity of the gun elevation rams occasioned by the entry and withdrawal of the ram piston rods as the guns are elevated and depressed. The valve box is situated on a bracket 
below the gun cradle in front of the air gunner and houses control valves operated by two control handles mounted one on each side of the air gunner and connected to the valve box through a system of levers and links. A gun travel interrupter mechanism is fitted to prevent the gun barrels from fouling the airframe when the turret is rotated with the guns depressed. This mechanism takes control of the valve box elevation valve in certain sectors of turret rotation and automatically elevates the guns independently of the air gunner's hand control and also prevents the guns from being depressed so that the gun barrels would foul the airframe. Palmer firing control mechanism is fitted to the turret, the firing control valve being operated by a solenoid which is mounted on the turret frame and connected to the control valve by a Bowden cable. A micro switch is mounted on each control handle and is closed by pressing the firing trigger, thereby energising the solenoid. A gun firing interrupter mechanism is incorporated in the turret to prevent damage being caused when parts of the aircraft structure intercept the line of fire. This mechanism consists of a cam operated micro switch which breaks the circuit to the solenoid controlling the firing control valve. The shape of the cam, which is rotated by the hydraulic motor, varies between the Mark I and Mark II turrets. A hand rotation gear is provided to rotate the turret when the hydraulic power is cut off and a catch adjacent to the handle can be engaged to lock the turret in any desired position. A rotation restrictor valve is incorporated in the hydraulic system and is fitted in one of the oil pipes connecting the valve box to the hydraulic motor. Its function is to slow down the speed of turret rotation when the guns are depressed to prevent shock when the gun travel interrupter mechanism comes into operation. The restrictor valve is operated automatically by the movement of the gun cradle and partially closes the passage through the valve to restrict the oil supply to the hydraulic motor. Four ammunition boxes, each holding 500 rounds of ammunition, are carried inside the turret. The ammunition belts are led from the boxes through ducts and pass through the gun cradle journals to the feed openings of the guns. The empty cartridge cases and belt links are discharged from the guns into wide mouth chutes which connect with containers carried inside the turret drum. In order to fill the ammunition boxes, armourers would make up four lengths of ammunition belt, each holding 500 rounds. First, Layer a length of ammunition belt into each front box. The belts being laid in so that the bullet noses point inwards and the rough side of the links are uppermost. The belt which is laid into the right hand box will thus have a double empty link at the end which is placed at the bottom of the box and that in the left hand box will end with a single link. After the front boxes are filled a length of belt should be layered into each rear box, but the leading end of the belt is not to be placed at the bottom, as was done with filling the front boxes, but is left hanging over the forward edge of the box, ready for joining up to the belt in each front box. To load the guns, remove the lid from the ammunition boxes, and pass the belt loading cable loop end first up the feed duct until the loop can be passed over the roller and through the guide in the gun cradle journal. The hook on the other end of the cable is then attached to the first link of the belt, 
which is then drawn up until it passes through the guide. The cable is then detached and the end of the belt is pushed into the feed opening of the gun until the first round is held by the retaining pulls. Pull back any slack belt and fold it into the rear ammunition box. Replace the ammunition box lid and engage the catches. A low pressure oxygen system is used. The supply entering the turret through the rotating service joint and passing to the economizer fitted to the side of the turret drum. A flexible pipe from the economizer is provided with a bayonet socket for connection to the tube from the air gunner's oxygen mask. Electrical components are grouped together on a central instrument panel which is mounted directly on the face protection plate by four bolts. Mounted on the front of the instrument panel are the following components. The two-way terminal block for the cable to the gun sight lamp. A cool light unit comprising of a receiver box, warning light and call button. A stowage clip for the intercommunication socket. The dimmer switch in circuit with the turret floodlight. A four unit fuse box carrying spare fuses in the lid. It protects the call light, cine camera, clothing heater, gun sight lamp and the gun firing circuit. And finally, a flush type two-way socket for the cine camera mains plug. The air gunner's seat is of a cradle type, which is adjustable for height and is carried in the rear portion of the caudal stiffeners. A locking quadrant attached to each projecting spigot has two holes in which spring-loaded locking bolts, one on each side of the seat, can engage. When the locking bolts are engaged in the lower holes, the seat is firmly fixed in its lowered position. A knob situated under the front of the seat is connected to the bolts by cables. When the knob is pressed, the bolts are withdrawn from the holes in the quadrants and a seat can be swung back through 90 degrees until the bolts engage with the upper holes in the quadrants, thereby holding the seat in its raised position to permit entry and exit from the turret. We'll now cover the method of operating the FN50 turret. The relative positions of the controls and instructions for operating the turret, together with the sequence in which the operations are to be done, are shown here. To carry out power operation of the turret, the hand levers on the control column must be depressed fully to operate the master valve, thus powering the turret. Move the control handles anti-clockwise for left rotation and clockwise for right rotation. Tilt the control handles forward to depress the guns and backwards for gun elevation. Combine movement of the control handles will produce corresponding combined movements of the guns. The speed operation of the turret is dependent on the amount of movement given to the control handles. The master valve is not used as a speed controller. When cocking and firing the guns, the air gunner must ensure that the fire and safe unit is set to safe. Then cock each gun in turn by pulling the cocking stud to the rear, using the cocking tool which is carried in the turret. Then press the rear sear release and again pull the cocking stud to the rear. To fire the guns, set the fire and safe units to fire and press the firing triggers on the control handles. 
The fire and safe units must be set at safe when taking off or landing. But well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell. Remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.